Welcome to everyone. My name is Alberto Square. I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Finance and Management, which is one of the departments of SOAS University of London. And I welcome you to this, uh, uh, to this event where I've been invited to share with you some views into the sort of stuff we do research and teach within the School of Finance and Management. It is just a small take towards what we do. We, ca we carry on in our, in our activity, but hopefully can provide some sense for you to better see who we are and uh, what we do at SOAS and, and so on. I'd like to share some slides and setting up in one second as I'm uh, sharing one of the applications that I have here open on my screen and I believe uh, you must be able to see uh, the slides at, at present. Just pause for one second if there is any comment but possibly I can safely uh, go on with the, with the presentation if you can see the slides as I presume. Uh, within uh, uh, SOAS, uh, it's a uh, SOAS University, University of London, there are several departments and uh, I belong uh, to the School of Finance and Management. So you may be familiar with SOAS, it's located in the very center of, uh, of London, just uh, um, the corner of uh, Russell Square, just uh, very close, a few uh, less than one minute walk from uh, a Senate house uh, and uh, the British Museum. Uh, within SOAS, there are departments like the School of Finance and Management to which I belong, uh, which runs uh, a number of uh, uh, undergrad, uh, postgraduate programs uh, and uh, PhD programs. And I specifically convene a teach uh, in one of the MSc programs, uh, the MSc Public Policy, Finance and Management, which can, you can see here on the slide. There are other MSc programs like Accounting and Finance, International Financial Management, International, international Business. Obviously, as I, uh, I convene and teach in public policy, finance and management, my main interest is in the area of public sector management, broadly conceived. I'm interested in the process of making policies, implementing, evaluating policies. I'm interested in the, pro in the process of managing government and public sector organizations. I'm also interested in the process of managing financial resources in the public sector. And uh, that's specifically what I'd like to share with you a few, a few thoughts, uh, thoughts about. What I do here is uh, actually to share some of the writings I'm doing these very weeks uh, as I decided to embark myself uh, into a small uh, paper, which is uh, intended to elaborate uh, on an argument which was put forward about uh, 10 years ago from the side of uh, various colleagues. Uh, you can see here at the bottom of the, of the slide, uh, the reference. So it was 2011 when uh, in the Journal of Public Administration Research and Theory, we had uh, an interesting short piece uh, called Why Public Financial Management Matters. And the authors, uh, there were several authors, you see Kyoko, Marlowe, Matkin, Moody, Smith, uh, and, and Zhao. Uh, I occasionally refer to this piece of work uh, in, when, whenever I teach, because there is a, an interesting argument there. They made the argument that we have uh, in public sector uh, management they use uh, areas of study and uh, we can spot uh, an area on public financial management uh, or PFM and uh, an, area, an area on public administration and management or PAM. So public financial management has to do obviously with all the processes concerning the management of financial resources in the public sector. We have uh, fiscal planning, we have uh, budgeting, we have uh, um, taxation, we have uh, cash management, debt management, internal control system, auditing, and so on. Public administration and management uh, instead uh, typically has to do with the way in which public sector organizations uh, implement uh, public policies. So issues concerning uh, uh, planning, uh, staffing, uh, resourcing, uh, design entities, uh, carrying out uh, programs and projects uh, and eventually evaluating uh, what uh, they deliver. Uh, 10 years ago, these authors uh, observed uh, there is uh, unfortunately uh, a, a sort of intellectual bifurcation between uh, PFM and uh, PAM in the sense uh, that to the two areas of scholarship, uh, they do have a fairly limited dialogue uh, with, uh, with each other. Uh, there is a, a focus concern on the side of PFM uh, on the technicalities of uh, managing uh, financial resources, but it doesn't seem to be by and large, uh, much of a mutual exchange uh, and the ways uh, to investigate how the study of the, of the financial, the management of the financial resource uh, can affect uh, the, the business 
managing and administering uh, public organizations. It's not always the case. There are some studies specifically on budgeting, for instance, which typically may look at the technicalities of budgeting, but also, but also discuss the politics around the budgetary process. But this was counted as, as an exception. And so they, think they completed this, uh, this work about 10 years ago with a call in, uh, around the ways in which research on public financial management could be made more relevant to the way in which we manage uh, government and public sector organizations. They suggested three specific areas uh, where these studies could, could focus on, as you can see in this slide. So they argued that research on public financial management could help PAM investigate the role of administrative expertise in democratic institutions. So this has to do with the relationship between typically elected politicians and representative bodies like parliaments and in government and the bureaucracy and the extent to which the technical expertise in the bureaucracy relates to the process of making decisions about managing the public sector within uh, democratic institutions. But another area where PFM uh, could, uh, could contribute is how to improve the performance of public organizations. Public or organizations typically have various dimensions of performance, uh, just to think about schools or hospitals uh, or uh, employment agencies. And of course, uh, much uh, of this performance uh, is not quite uh, a financial one, but nevertheless, uh, still uh, pursuing uh, the capacity of public sector entities to break even and improving efficiency, cost effectiveness of public sector entities can uh, facilitate or can support uh, the achievement of performance uh, also in other dimensions. And finally, they argue PFM research could also help uh, investigate how public sector organizations can improve their adaptiveness uh, to changing environment, uh, especially whenever they face a strategic problem about a better understanding the changing conditions of the environment and uh, where to invest uh, and where to find the resources uh, in order to be better able to perform in the, in the future. That's where we, we could stand, we could stay, uh, we, we, we stood up to the argument which was put forward from the side of, uh, of these authors uh, 10 years ago. And their concern about bridging public financial management with the generally public administration and management could make sense, especially if you think about the context where, where, where they discussed these ideas. So 10 years ago, it was the context uh, still in the aftermath of the financial crisis 2008-9, which had various repercussions, including an increased level of public debt in, in governments. And uh, this entailed also sometimes a reduction of a level of public services, uh, together with the austerity measures or uh, some forms of restructuring of the systems for delivery of public services. I believe we can argue nowadays uh, public financial management could be just uh, more important than ever. The last decade has been very dense with uh, events uh, which affect the way in which uh, the public sector works. So 2015, the launch of the Sustainable Development Goals and the many programs concerning poverty reduction to climate change and so on, which affect decisions from the side of governments about dedicating resources to implement uh, programs in these areas. Of course, uh, other initiatives like the Framework Convention on Climate Change uh, brings uh, uh, the importance uh, of uh, energy transition, diversification of uh, energy sources uh, um, into, uh, at the top of the, of the agenda of many, of many countries. Over the last decade, uh, the full rise of China in the economic uh, arena did have important repercussions in terms of international uh, finance and financial flows. And then, of course, in the very last few years, uh, we could experience uh, first the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, and the consequential effects in terms of deficits for the budgets of many governments, uh, especially with the drop of uh, revenue because of the lockdowns uh, and reduction of business activity, and also, on the other hand, the surge of public spending, uh, like in healthcare. And then more recently, of course, we still live uh, around the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and we can just uh, anticipate at this stage the effect that this may have on international trade and domestic uh, GDP in uh, various countries, and therefore also on, uh, on public finances. So I believe the scenario is one where 
it could still make sense to think back at uh, public financial management and to better investigate the way in which public financial management could uh, relate to and possibly contribute more generally to the studies on uh, public uh, administration and management. So there are basically three questions I, I still entertain myself to, to think and to write about. Um, first, uh, just empirically to look at whether uh, anything has been done in the last decades uh, in order to close, uh, to fix this intellectual bifurcation, which was uh, identified about uh, 10 years ago. Uh, to think about why, if uh, this bifurcation exists, uh, is still there, and uh, how an improved theoretical dialogue between public financial management and public administration and management uh, could uh, take place. On the empirical side of this, of this research, well, it is just to have a look by means of a bibliographic, bibliometric assisted, sorry, uh, literature review to look at what kind of studies have been done around the public financial management, especially in the last decade. So I went uh, through one of our search engines uh, we have at universities to search for articles, journal articles. And from one of those uh, scopus, uh, as you can see, I could spot uh, a number of articles, publications uh, uh, with the phrase uh, public financial management or public sector financial management published in the area of social sciences uh, generally. So the phrase, the, the term by itself already starts to be used in the 70s, but possibly you can spot uh, from the diagram how precisely in the last decade, decade uh, there has been a remarkable increase uh, of interest uh, from the side of scholars uh, towards public financial management. As you can see, the vertical line is there after 2011, so after uh, Kyoko and other colleagues' publication, and uh, clearly the number of articles which have been published in the last decade is quite considerable there is a growing interest towards public financial management if we look at where these works have been published but well, first you may spot uh, we're not uh, quite uh, talking about uh, too many works first as you can see i could spot like uh, 33 um, articles uh, published uh, over the last decade and uh, a number of them uh, are um, in a kind of a second tier uh, journals uh, in the area of uh, public sector management generally. So top journals are roughly indicated by an indicator like a Scopus uh, site score. And so you can see like public administration review or public management review there in the bottom of this uh, uh, ranking. They, they just highlight uh, how these venues uh, do not quite pay much attention to issues of public financial management uh, or just uh, works uh, which have been done on public financial management. Uh, they do not quite find uh, much uh, or a lot to say uh, in venues which are more about public financial, public, public, uh, public administration and management. A journal like public money management, uh, which is the one on the top of the list, is clearly more uh, uh, dedicated to the study of public financial management by itself. So generally, also apart from the metrics, uh, if you look at the, if you if we read these works uh, which have been studied, we can find that they typically, obviously, refer relate to issues which are at the very core of public financial management, but they very weakly, if at all, relate to concerns, broader concerns of uh, public administration and management. So this could be studies about uh, uh, making reforms of public financial management, especially introducing accrual accounting in the public sector or international public sector accounting standards uh, specifically. There are some works uh, concerning fiscal risk and sustainability of public finances, especially in scenarios uh, of austerity, which are, which are imposed uh, to the country. And there are a few uh, studies uh, which uh, tend to, work, to look at uh, public financial management systems and practices uh, in emerging economies uh, like uh, or in, in countries which have been relatively less studied so far like iraq or afghanistan for instance and a few studies uh, just concerned about how to improve the curriculum what we teach in public financial management so by and large i believe we may share an impression that uh, such an intellectual bifurcation which was lamented 10 years ago is still there was it the case is it just a natural state of affairs, after all, that uh, you know we have scholars uh, 
who tend to specialize uh, on public financial management uh, topics only, and uh, they may not have uh, an interest uh, to engage uh, with the broader literature on public administration and management. Well, there are a number of reasons, I believe, uh, why this state of affairs uh, exists and can persist. It could be just a plain uh, division of labor. You know, uh, as uh, academics, we can't really study everything. And uh, in every field, uh, there is a natural inclination towards uh, just to be more specialized in some topic rather than, than other, and other, other ones. It can be quite uh, challenging uh, to, to, to bridge different areas. There could be also institutional reasons uh, in the sense that some scholars could be intellectually more attached to certain disciplines than others. So public financial management is clearly more related to accounting and finance and the public administration and management uh, could be more related uh, broadly, if you like, to political science or public law or more specific areas like public administration and management. There could be like a, a parallel uh, uh, trajectories of, uh, of embarking uh, into, into research. Uh, of course, uh, interdisciplinary research uh, is always possible, but sometimes in, ter in terms of uh, productivity of, uh, of research, uh, this may not be quite uh, an advantageous uh, route to take. There could be, however, also pretty much epistemological position. So, I mean, uh, what kind of uh, approach to research is followed uh, in these different, uh, different areas? And I would say, to my impression, public financial management uh, is uh, pretty much a concern with uh, documenting practices, uh, providing accounts of how public financial man management systems have been designed, how they work, uh, and uh, providing advice uh, on the basis of, uh, of, of such an evidence about how next uh, public financial management systems can be, can be uh, reproduced. Sometimes even just the descriptive accounts of, of uh, PFM systems and practices. On the other hand, uh, research on public administration and management is a uh, a bit more diverse. There are, there are of course, uh, even descriptive, uh, um, descriptive approaches there. But on the other hand, uh, epistemologically speaking, uh, research, uh, that part of research on public administration and uh, public management uh, has also embarked into a research uh, oriented towards developing theories and then uh, testing theories empirically. So more of a, a mode of research around the drawing a hypothesis from theories which are then tested by means of various evidence collected, for example, through survey questionnaires out of a large amount of accounts of the way in which public administration and management practices are, are followed. So for a number of reasons, I believe we can spot uh, uh, various ways in which public financial management and public public administration and management uh, tend to diverge from uh, from each other. And oh, an open question then uh, is uh, whether is there any way to find a common ground, to find uh, some way where actually research which is done in public financial management and public administration and management could actually recognize uh, their work uh, along similar lines. This could help uh, to exchange uh, views on their findings. Uh, this could help uh, finding uh, designs for doing research where both uh, PFM and public administration and management concerns can be, can be shared. And an idea I'd like to elaborate uh, is the one uh, of uh, looking at uh, at least a part of what is done in public financial management and public administration and management as having to do with the tackling design questions. So design questions relates to the general idea of design science and the design science brings back to ideas, especially coming from Herbert Simon. Herbert Simon, I believe, is reputed as the, the only possibly Nobel Prize laureate in the area of public administration. He wrote extensively about many areas, including economics, but definitely he also spent a lot of attention towards processes of especially making decisions within, within public administration, within government. And the part of the arguments uh, coming from Herbert Simon were that we should be clearly distinguish sciences of the nature and sciences of the artificial, as they put it. And the sciences of, of the artificial has to do with investigating everything uh, which are eventually artifacts created by, by us as, uh, as humans.
So if you like a main line, I may oversimplify here, is that it's not quite the same to investigate the laws of nature and to, design, to, to, to devise theories, to formulate hypotheses, and to expect evidence to falsify this hypothesis or not. Uh, we, may, we may argue we do not know much about what's, uh, what's at source in the design of nature as we understand it. But when we deal with what humans do in the social domain, economics, uh, in public administration, in government, in uh, managing public finances, here we are dealing with uh, objects, uh, artifacts, uh, which are created by, by, by humans. Part of them are created uh, in a very deliberate effort. We design how to better tackle corruption practices in a public administration. Sometimes uh, some of uh, what humans do just, uh, in a sense, arises uh, out of their interaction. So there are habits which are formed, uh, there are routines uh, which are acquired, uh, and eventually the way in which they behave um, is not quite completely deliberately designed. And so therefore we may have a question about investigating how is it a certain state of affairs came out. When approaching the science of uh, artificial, Simon suggested, well, we are doing a particular sort of intellectual investigative inquiry, because part of it is about precisely how to design such, a, such a systems. So if you take uh, as, a, as a matter of analogy the work uh, an architect does, uh, an architect uh, is uh, embarking uh, in a professional uh, discipline which uh, consists eventually in the production of an artifact which can be a particular unique uh, uh, house which has been built. In order to get uh, to that final end state, uh, there are a number of artifacts which are produced, like the very designs of the house uh, which is still to be, to be built. The way in which uh, the design of the house is made typically comes out of a number of, of factors. There are requirements coming from the needs of the client, and there are a set of conditions, including constraints, which arise from the context where the design solution is to be applied. So uh, every house to be designed by, by the architect uh, is, a, is a unique uh, case in a sense. So it does have to fulfill the unique needs and requirements of the specific client. And it has to take into account the specific unique features uh, of the location, could be wind, sun, uh, shape of the terrain, and so on and so on. So how does an architect proceed? It does not quite uh, start from scratch does not need to reinvent the wheel. There are a number of principles typically uh, um, condensed into what can be called the design references, like general principles about how we can design, how we can solve the solutions for the specific design problem at hand. Okay, so how to do with the light coming specifically from one side with another one, or the wind, and so on and so on. And so eventually what is uh, produced is a specific design solution to that specific, specific problem. So I digressed a bit too much probably, but the main point is that there has been a tendency then over the decades to also conceive part of social sciences, social science research, especially having to do with the design problems. So there are design problems, uh, like how to design an improved way to deliver uh, education in schools, how to design a more efficient way to deliver healthcare, or how to design an improved way to, 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 to tackle corruption in administrative practices, or to improve planning, fiscal planning for our administration, and so on and so on. Recently, these arguments have been especially developed, elaborated on the side of public administration and management by some colleagues of mine. I'd like to mention here Professor Michael Basley, currently working at the LSE, still working at the LSE, just 20 minutes walk from SOAS, uh, who, who used to be my supervisor of my PhD, which I did at, at the LSE years ago. And uh, in uh, his recent works, uh, precisely, he elaborated further the idea that uh, public administration can be conceived as a design science, public management can be conceived as a design-oriented professional, professional discipline.
And my interest at present is specifically in public financial management. And what I believe can be told there is that what counts as a lot of research in PFM, which is done around descripting and explaining how public financial management systems and practice work, actually could be even better conceived as well as efforts to, uh, to help tackle design uh, problems and offering design solutions. Eventually, public financial management specialists come out with a number, quite a considerable repertoire of ideas concerning how the financial resource can be, can be managed. How can we plan for it? How can we design uh, taxes uh, in order to extract the resources from our, our economy? How can we procedurally uh, orchestrate uh, our planning programming pr uh, process uh, so that uh, the, the needs from the society can be taken into account within the venues, institutional venues for producing uh, plans, uh, programs, and eventually budgets in government and in public sector organizations, and so on and so on. All of these, I believe, we can conceive as offering design solutions to, to design problems. Of course, again, with a very similarity to what are general design problem scenarios, like, for instance, diversity of design solution taking into consideration the specific needs and requirements of a client and specific condition to deal with. So, for example, here uh, I should mention it becomes quite apparent how, apart from general principles of designing public financial management systems and theories, the local context does matter. So, designing a system for doing the budgeting or internal control system in one country could be quite different from another country because all the institutional, uh, social uh, set system of routines and practices in every local context can be quite different and therefore uh, also PFM systems and practices may need to be tailored to the specific, uh, specific conditions. At the very end of my argument, uh, I just put forward the idea that uh, I remained uh, a bit skeptical that the original uh, proposal from the side of those authors uh, was quite, uh, quite fruitful. Because in a sense, they argued uh, that uh, PFM studies uh, could focus their attention on some topics uh, which are of general interest uh, to public administration and management. But in such a way, I believe uh, research on PFM uh, would be in an ancillary role a uh, role with respect to PMM research and uh, would need to divert uh, their attention from uh, away from the focus concern of the discipline. I believe it can be just uh, more fruitful to be quite deliberate, explicit about uh, the existence uh, of uh, um, problems, uh, which are not those uh, to explain, uh, to develop theories about how is it, why is it that things happen, but these are more questions about design. So how we can design systems which can tackle uh, issues uh, at the core of interest for public financial management, but at the same time, they also have implications and they can be shared as a matter of design issues also from the side of public administration and management. So some examples, questions like you see on the slide, how fraud and corruptions and corruption can be successfully prevented, deterred, detected, and sanctioned. And this is at the core of public financial management, uh, but clearly answer to a question about how to design uh, to provide a solution to such issues uh, could be quite uh, of concern also for, for public administration and management. Uh, how public money can be shown to be spent effectively and efficiently, it has to do with the budget execution. It also has to do with the accountability and how emergencies uh, now we experience from the outbreak of the pandemic uh, or the one of the war can be promptly, promptly tackled, which is uh, something which calls for a response, uh, not just in terms of uh, leveraging uh, resources uh, like uh, foreign aid or military resources, but also how we can uh, marshal uh, the financial resources in order to cope uh, with, uh, with an emergency. So it is all around these how questions about how to design something and to create the new artifacts which can perform better, uh, where I believe both PFM and public administration and management research could, uh, could find a common, common ground. 
Well, I've been talking for about 25 minutes, I believe. And uh, my intention is uh, not to make a presentation too long. After all, you know, 20 minutes is kind of a standard length of uh, presentations as we make uh, in academic uh, conferences and presumably also uh, quite uh, uh, how much uh, my audience uh, could stand, especially given uh, the, uh, the digital medium of, of interaction. So I just, I just, just to stop here, uh, as, I, as I said at the beginning, uh, this uh, short presentation was mainly intended to help uh, convey uh, what kind of uh, questions, what kind of studies uh, of issues we are concerned in doing uh, our research in the School of Finance and Management, although of course I'm just offering a specific take around the public sector and management because that's uh, where, I, where I come from, that's my main area of, of expertise. At this stage, uh, I may ask uh, Katie also to help uh, coordinate, uh, because I would be very happy if you like to open a discussion around uh, these, uh, these ideas, uh, if you have any, any interest uh, and experience in the way in which the public sector works, how financial resources and the problems around financial resources are tackled uh, in the public sector. Otherwise, uh, equally, I'd be very happy to take questions uh, more generally if you are interested uh, in uh, SOAS, uh, in studying at the School of Finance uh, and Management in particular, and uh, in any of the programs uh, which I mentioned earlier. Hi, Alberto. Yeah, maybe, maybe just see if anyone has any questions, and then if not, um, perhaps you can, uh, we can sort of look at doing the, um, the first option instead. Okay, thank you, Katie. Yes, I'm very happy to still wait and pause for a few, for a few seconds. Uh, otherwise, uh, if uh, there is no uh, further interest towards this topic, or if you have any interest about any other topic uh, you'd like to know more about what we cover in our programs, I'm very, very happy to, to talk. Otherwise, if that's fine, as I said earlier, just as an overview, I mentioned that we have a number of postgraduate programs within the School of Finance and Management at SOAS, and I'm very happy also to provide an overview concerning these, these programs. I just have a few slides here, I will go through them very, very quickly, and I will leave enough time, plenty of time, if you have specific questions instead. One of the MSc programs is the one on, on accounting and finance. As the name says, uh, it has to do uh, with uh, uh, these particular uh, disciplines. And uh, you can possibly spot there on the slide, but definitely you can have more information from the website, uh, the, the name of the, uh, what the courses, the modules which are taught. So there are core modules, uh, which include the dissertation, which is a compulsory component uh, for the program. And uh, you have uh, a number of, uh, of modules. You can see they are, they are the list. They, all have to do with accounting and finance, of course, uh, taken at a certain uh, advanced level. Uh, because of these, uh, possibly a number or the typical student in the MSc accounting and finance could already have a background uh, in any of these uh, disciplines. You can also spot the, the logo of uh, SIMA, the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, because part of the modules which are taken for the, taken for the MSc also uh, can be carried forward as a credits in order to get uh, the, the summer qualification. So you can get some, uh, some uh, exemptions. The second MSc is about international financial management. So as the name says uh, here, it's uh, about uh, the um, marvelous domains, uh, amazing domain we have nowadays uh, in the world of the international financial system and flows. So here we have uh, a number of, uh, of modules uh, which are all concerned with uh, uh, specialist knowledge uh, on financial management in the international, international setting, bearing in mind the conditions of the real world business environment. Convener of the program is Professor Victor Murinde. He's uh, uh, the chairman of the Center for Global Finance within SOAS, uh, uh, world, world known expert uh, on such issues like uh, uh, financial inclusion, but also very active uh, also in other areas, like for instance, the rise of a FinTech. In the MSc International Business, 
we have here instead more of a, on, of a focus on business and management of uh, companies, enterprises, rather than the domain of accounting and finance. And uh, here my colleague, the convener, Dr. Huang Zhu, uh, she's an expert, uh, especially of uh, Asian economies uh, of China, but apart from China, this MSc International Business includes attention for a, a number of other geographical areas uh, that, that we cover. As you may well know, so as an as institutional, traditional expertise, especially, especially in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East, and a number of colleagues of mine have a specialized knowledge on particular countries or regions in, uh, in the world. And uh, last, I'd like also to mention the MSc Public Policy, Finance and Management and the Convino and the main trait uh, is uh, we're dealing with the public sector here. So how public policies are made, how they are implemented, how public sector entities are managed, how financial resources are managed, how public governance works, so the intertwining the relationship between governments, public sector entities, and entities in the private sector or uh, non-profit sector. And uh, uh, hopefully in uh, the previous uh, pre presentation, I could also provide a, a sense of a flavor of what is, what is studied within uh, public policy, finance uh, and management. So, uh, Katie and everyone, it took, as you, could, as you could see, five more minutes just to provide this overview about uh, the programs that we teach. And uh, at this stage, if that's fine, I pause again for, for a few seconds just to wait uh, if there are any questions. Sounds good. Thank you, Alberto. Thanks for going over the overview. I think that's really useful. Um, yeah, let's just, um, just leave it a minute or two. If anyone has any questions, you can enter them into the chat, or if you would prefer, you can also unmute your microphone and speak to us that way. Um, so yeah, I'll just leave it at a moment. Hello, Anis. I can see your line in chat. I believe you may either switch on your microphone, otherwise I wait if you prefer to type any question there in the chat. Uh, all right, uh, so you applied to the MSc International Finance uh, and Development, uh, which I believe uh, belongs uh, to another department, uh, if I'm correct. If you like, I may try and help on the spot uh, to see if, uh, if I'm correct. Sorry, Alberto. Yeah, that is correct. That's actually um, as part of our economics department. Thank you. I was just th thank you, uh, Katie. I was just uh, very quickly googling uh, the name of this uh, MSc just to remind me to which other department uh, it belongs within within SOAS. Okay. I, I should say, of course, uh, different departments, uh, uh, they may have a different uh, intellectual orientation, interest, uh, prefer the set of readings. Uh, there is also a certain amount of overlap uh, in between different uh, disciplinary uh, expertise and orientation. 
and uh, also colleagues uh, in other department, uh, departments like economics uh, or development studies, uh, they obviously uh, pursue uh, very interesting uh, lines of inquiry concerning uh, possibly matching uh, and putting together some concern with the finance uh, uh, together with more specific uh, concern for, for development. Okay. So if, if there are no questions, as I believe, uh, my just very final line is uh, to put there in the chat my email, aa144 at source.ac.uk, as I will be very happy to, to answer any questions you have uh, or to help you uh, find your way in, uh, in the website or to find the information you need before uh, you fully understand what SOAS is, what we can offer, and make a decision to, to apply. Okay. Oh, concerning scholarship, uh, Christiana, uh, I'm not an, an expert in this area. I can just say that within the SOAS website, there is a, a web page with uh, which colleagues uh, maintain uh, concerning uh, a number of scholarship schemes, uh, for also for postgraduate students. So the best I can do, I believe, is to um, bring your attention within uh, the SOAS website uh, to this resource. And uh, Katie, I believe either you are faster than me to suggest uh, the web page to to uh, to Christiana. Otherwise, I try and Google it and uh, post uh, this uh, this uh, resource uh, in in the chat. I believe uh, if we just uh, uh, Google source scholarships, uh, this must be the web page. Yes, thank you, Katie. It's the same one. Which, which I found uh, out of Googling. Okay, uh, so, so there, are, there are a number of schemes, uh, of course, uh, a number of them could be open. They're still open, as I can see. A few of them uh, could be already closed. Just the point is to check if you qualify for them. There may be restrictions depending on nationality or other, other, other criteria. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you, Alberto. Um, we can we can wrap this up slightly early if um, if there's no further questions. So thank you very much um, to yourself for the presentation and also to our attendees for coming along today. Um, we do have a, a live chat um, session going on on the 13th of April, and you can book that on our website. Um, and that is with our student recruitment team who will be able to answer more questions about scholarships, fees, um, visas and, and accommodation and all those kind of questions before you start with us. So um, I will just put the link to that in the chat before um, before logging off. Um, but other than that, thank you so much and um, we'll hope to see you Good, uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Katie and everyone uh, for staying with us uh, for this time. Thank you. Thanks, bye.